probably for like the next day or two, we didn't talk to each other. And then of course, everything was fine after that, but very, very bad situation and not something that I would want anybody to be in. So my brother and I played in 2001 in the United States Junior Chess Championship. Now, this is a very prestigious tournament. It is a round robin tournament. I believe it features the top 10 players in the country under the age of 20 years old. Now, nine of the players are seated by rating the top players in the United States. And there is a 10th spot that is given, or at least at the time, was given to the player who won the U.S. Junior Open Championship. Now, my brother actually won that tournament to qualify for the U.S. Junior Championship, which was played that year in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So... Of course, this was a very unpleasant situation to be in. Uh, the fact that we had to play against each other. Obviously, my brother and I were there with my mom. We, I think we had like one, we basically had one and a half rooms roughly. I think we had two rooms where they were connected to each other. But in the middle of the tournament, we had to play each other. Now, of course, I was one of the favorites in the tournament. I was doing very well. And my brother was, was sort of the wild card. But what to do? You got to play the game. So the game starts with my brother playing e4 against me. Now, after he played e4, I decided to play d6 and pretend that I would go on to become a streamer and play all these stupid modern openings. Now, most people probably know that uh, at the time, the main opening that I played was normally the uh, Sicilian. I played the Sicilian with c5, d6, a lot of night orbs. But my brother, from the time that he first learned chess until the time that he more or less stopped playing, he always played this move c3, also known as the c3 Sicilian or the Alapin. And it's just a very, very solid setup. Um, and I didn't really want to go into it. So after e4, I chose to play d6. He played d4. I played g6. This was the summer of 2001. So I would have been 13 years old at the time. He would have been, I believe, uh, 15. He would have been 15 because his birthday was in February. So I play, play the modern system. My brother plays f4. This is what we call the Austrian attack. You guys have probably seen me play this position from both sides many, many times. So I go knight to c6 here. He plays bishop e3. And now I play knight to f6. Goes h3 here. Now, I remember at the time, in one of the other tournaments, maybe it was the US Open uh, in Minnesota, or maybe it was in the Denker tournament of, of college kids. My brother actually lost the game, I think, with the white piece and something similar to a uh, kid by the name of David John, who was about a FIDE master, roughly 2000, 2001. Again, just going back my memory. Uh, but yes, they held the United States Open Championship in... Uh, in Minneapolis in Minnesota I believe in 2001 or 2000 I don't remember the exact year but they held it there so at any rate he plays h3 to stop my g4 so I castle he goes queen to d2 now I play e5 trying to strike in the center of the board he plays this move knight to f3 which is already going in the wrong direction what my brother probably should have played is he probably should have traded the pawns on e5 and then played this move d5 Although the reason I don't think he did this is because now I can play knight to d4 here. And this is another thing that I've always said to people who play various openings. You have to be aware of the themes of what the openings are. So I'm going to go back to start. Now, there's another opening that can happen, which is called the King's Indian Defense. And you get this classic Samish variation with bishop e3, knight to c6, like knight g2, let's just say a6, knight g3, where black can go e5, d5, and now plop the pony on d4. Now, the point behind plopping the pony on d4 is that after knight to d4, white can trade. And after you take on d4, I go knight takes e4 here, fossilizing the queen. If you take the knight, I go rook to e8, pinning the tail on the donkey. So this is one, one, one idea. But now, again, the reason you want to be aware of themes is even if the opening is different, the same concept applies here. So when you get to this position, after takes, takes d5, knight d4, if white takes on d4, takes twice after queen takes d4 there's again knight takes d4 creating the fossil and if you take the knight same thing i play rook to e8 simply winning the queen on e4 so it's very important to note these these sorts of themes now of course white is better here after knight f3 but it's a little bit hard to judge to us humans because after knight takes f3 gf3 there moves like knight to h5 and knight f4 and knight g3 maybe even queen h4 you can also potentially play a move like c5 here over protecting the temporary bastion on d4 so my brother instead plays knight f3, which is a, a, a mistake. It's not the best move here, because now I take on d4, knight takes d4, and now I trade, which actually seems wrong. Why did I not play rook e8? Actually, computer says rook e8 is the best move. Why didn't I go rook e8 here? I was already like close. I was already, I think, 20 close to 2400 at this point. Really, I didn't play rook e8. Very strange because rookie eight is uh, is a much better move. You target the pawn on e4, 
And if white goes bishop to d3 here, for example, you can go knight takes, bishop takes. I think you go c5. Yeah, you go c5 here because now if white moves the bishop back, let's just say f2, you have c4 undermining the bishop on, on d3, which guards the pawn on e4. And after bishop takes c4, there's knight takes e4, takes, takes, double attack, and a check. And after bishop to e2, I assume you go computer likes queen e8. Both queen e8 and queen e7 look very good because white cannot cast the king here because you would lose the bishop on two. So this this is very good for black if, if white plays bishop takes f6 even though you have a temporary bastion square on d5 after queen takes let's just say castles you go bishop e6 and you have b5 c4 a lot of threats on these diagonals here and black is doing very very well i'm a little bit perplexed as to why i didn't play rookie eight. now mind you keep in mind there probably was uh probably were some emotions involved as well because it was a very awkward situation having to play against my brother so i traded on d4 i played knight takes e4 here which is not the best move, but I guess I, I, you know, at the time I was a bit of a tactile whiz. I was a young kid, young upstart kid. Obviously I did my puzzles every day. I used to be good at tactics. So clearly I saw something. So we get knight takes e4. I play rook to e8, pinning the knight on e4. He castles, I take, he trades on g7, and now he goes bishop to d3. I play rook to e8 and he plays g4. Now, on first glance, when you look at this position, you'll see once again, you see Ichi ni san yon go roku, Ichi ni san yon, Ichi ni san yon go roku nana. So you'll see that I have an extra pawn here with the black pieces, but my bishop is not great. White has quick ideas to attack on the king side here, and it's very hard to play. So I play bishop d7, trying to activate the bishop to c6, and then maybe going queen f6 later. You get pawn to f5, which I think is sort of the start of going in the wrong direction here. My first instinct in this position is that white should play g5 or, or rook hf1. Both appear to be good. But g5 makes some sense because white would love to go queen c3, attacking the king and the pawn at the same time. Classic 90 degree right triangle, of course. Uh, but if you go queen c3 here, I can go queen f6 blocking. If you take the pawn, you lose the pawn on f4. And of course, if you trade, you're simply down a pawn here. So if you go g5 first to stop queen to f6 and then play queen c3, it looks kind of scary to play. And honestly, if I had the choice, of course, this game was 22 years ago, but I would much prefer to be white here as opposed to black. Queen c3 is an idea, h4, h5 is an idea. And black, even though you have the extra pawn, you don't really have any attacks on the queen side. A file is closed. Maybe bishop e6 is okay, but it looks pretty scary. So in this position, we get f f5 being played. I play rook to e5 here. Now, this is why f5 is a bad move, because now I get this nice square on e5 where the rook is protected. I can line up a legendary triple stack down the road, potentially, or just a classic double stack. Both are very good, uh, but it should be fine. So we get rook to f1 here. Now I go f6, which, of course, is a ridiculous move. Any normal person knows that I should go queen h4 here to line up the double stack. And also by putting the queen here, I prevent white from being able to play h4, h5 and open up the h file. So a very obvious move that uh, 22 years ago, I simply, my feeble brain could not uh, compute. So instead I play f6. Now my brother plays h4. Now here white is actually doing quite well. White should probably play rook g1 followed by g5. And with these pawns here on f6 and g6, it's quite scary. If I go queen to e7, for example, white can go g5. Uh, and it, you can play rook f8 or you can take or like I mean if you take on g5 you get forked by f6 you don't want to do that so you have to go rook f8 to guard the pawn but again everything is kind of collapsing here white can trade take 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 and boom goes the dynamite with rook takes g6 and white would be winning so here h h4 was played instead not the best move but it happens I play queen to e7 takes on g6 I take and now he plays this move h5 now white is actually doing very very well here even though black is up a pawn you'll notice that the king is a little bit loose here these pawns are a touch loose as well and with perfect play white should maintain a small advantage my brother plays h6 I go king to h8 plays queen to f2 attacking the pawn on f6 and the pawn on a7 if I play rook f8 so we get rook f8 we get queen takes a7, but now I take the pawn on g4. And even though after queen takes b7, material is even, both sides have uh, four pawns here in this position. I have two connected pawns. I control the open e file with the double stack, and it should be very, very good for black. Additionally, it's a lot harder for white to push these pawns on the queen side without weakening the king, whereas my king is very, very safe sitting here in the corner. So I go bishop to e6, attacking the pawn on a2, also lining up a double attack with bishop b5. Goes queen b4 play queen to f7 here which is again a ridiculous move why didn't i just go f5 f4 terrible 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 play by me i played queen f7 goes a3 
So c5, he plays queen d2. Now I played c4 here. And now the position starts to fall apart right away. What white probably should do here, I mean, maybe there's no better moves. I guess queen c3 is still c4. So maybe a3 is already wrong. Probably white should play something like queen c3, c5, and then I guess b3 to stop the c4 pawn push. But instead he played a3, c5, queen d2. Now I go c4, bishop e2, only move. And now I have this very nasty move c3 here, which attacks the queen. White cannot take with the queen because then you lose the bishop. Uh, and if you take with a pawn, as my brother did, now your king is kind of open. You're temporarily up a pawn. So there are a lot of threats on the b file. So I play queen to a7, attacking the pawn on a3. Also, potentially going queen to e3 as well. Like, say white takes on d6, there is queen to e3 here. So he plays queen d3. Now, I guess queen d6 is in reality the best move. So if I play queen d6, white can run the king out to, like, d1. But again, for us humans, and especially at, like, a 2300 level, kind of hard to expect perfect play. So my brother plays queen d3. Now I play rook b8, which... What the heck is rook b8? Why didn't... Really? This is pathetic. I was like 2400. Did I really play this badly? What the heck is rook b8? Queen takes a3 just wins on the spot. So if white goes king b1, you have rook b8. And it's just, I mean, <sighs> rook b8 takes, takes, and it's mate and mate right away. And if white goes king d2 or king to d1, I just go rook d5 and I win the queen on d3. And don't ask me why, but apparently I didn't do this. Maybe I was maybe I was feeling bad for my brother here. And so I played rook b8 instead. Like, this is ridiculous. I was 2400. How did I not? How did I not play this? Anyway, I play rook b8. He takes on f6. Now I go queen. Queen to e3 check. Wait, what the heck? Wait, I'm sorry. This is 2001. Maybe I wasn't 2400, but I was at least 2300 here. Like, I was a good player already. Uh. Yeah, I think I was feeling bad. So I played... Queen to e3. Again, even here, there, there are multiple ways to win. Bishop c4 is a fancy schmancy computer way. But even something like queen to a3 and rook d5 is still good enough, probably. But instead, I go check. He plays queen d2. Now, this is the fatal blunder. If white trades the queens here and goes like king d2, rook e5, and bishop d3, white is actually winning here. White has two extra pawns. You have Ichinisan, uh, Ichinisan go. Uh, you have four pawns. Black has two pawns, Ichini. So you're up two pawns here, and you're completely winning. However, my brother makes a fatal mistake here and he plays queen to d2, which allows me to play rook to b1. Or no, rook b1 check doesn't work. Sorry, if I go rook b1 check, I guess takes takes white still has tricks with bishop d3. And so it won't quite work. So instead, I guess I played queen takes e2, which actually is good enough. So after takes, I simply have an extra bishop here. And if white takes on d6, I go check, block, and then rook b1, no bishop d3 tricks. So I take... My brother trades the queens and now it's kind of gone after rook takes e2 he plays rook h5 now this very nasty move bishop to a2 lining up the classic ladder checkmate here he goes king to d1 i play rook to g2 plays h7 and now i play rook to b1 which is of course checkmate the king has no squares and with that i won this game my only game that my brother and i ever played in a rated event uh, I did win this game against my brother. So this was a very, very tough game, obviously. Uh, did not play it very well. I think there were emotions involved, with, goes without saying. This was a classical game of chess. It was played at the U.S. Junior Championship in 2001 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, which I did win. Now, again, very, 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 very unpleasant situation, of course, after the game. Uh, you know, we tried, we didn't, like, talk to each other. I think, I think my brother actually, like, cried, if I remember correctly. Like, it was just, it was a very bad situation altogether. And I think... Uh, I think like probably for like the next day or two, we didn't talk to each other. And then of course, everything was fine after that, but very, very bad situation and not something that I would want anybody to be in. So this was the one and only time that I played against my brother in a rated classical game of chess. I hope you guys did enjoy this recap. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't. And for everybody who's watching this on Twitch, I hope you enjoy seeing how Abe Broman makes the sausage. I will show you guys a quick, quick game that was played. I believe this was yesterday between, of course, uh, between Mr. Robert Hess with the white pieces and my brother with the black pieces. Now, of course, as you guys know, Robert Hess is a GM and my brother is simply about 2200 master level. The game starts with B3. We get E5. Why can't I hear it? Uh, we get Bishop B2. We get D6. We get E3 here. Pretty normal by Robert. He's trying to play like me, actually. He's trying to play like B3, E3, Bishop B2. We get G6. H4 played. Bad move by Robert. Definitely not what you'd recommend to people who are new to the new to the game. But he tries to play a wing pawn attack. We get Knight to F6, which prevents White from playing H5 here. We get Pawn to D4. 
We get e takes d4, takes, takes, and now bishop g7, knight to c3. Again, pretty normal here. We got knight c6, bishop b5. I would have played queen d2 probably with the idea of trying to cast the queen side, but Robert plays bishop to b5. We get bishop d7, takes, takes, knight to f3, knight to h5 here, queen to d2, queen d7. Again, remains pretty balanced. Maybe it's a little bit preferable for black with the bishop pair. Uh, bishops are really well placed here. We got castles, castles. Now we got this move rook dg1 played by Robert, which really just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, I guess the idea is that he wants to go knight d4 here, but of course this would hang a pawn. So he goes rook g1, idea to then play knight d4, the pawn will be guarded, and maybe g4 a little bit later on. We get rook hg8, knight to d4, we get knight to f6 back, knight takes bishop, queen takes knight, queen d4, king b8, and now Robert goes g4, trying to play g5 or maybe h5. No fossils really exist here, because if you move the knight anywhere, you hang the bishop on g7. We get bishop to h8, lining up knight e4, knight d5, or maybe even knight h5. Queen f4 is played by Robert. My brother plays knight d5. Now, knight takes g4, of course, would be a stronger move, because if white takes knight with the rook, you lose the rook on h1. And if you take back with the queen, now I simply take the knight on c3. And here, if we do the math, you'll see ichi ni san yon go roku shichi, shichi or nana, ichi ni san yon go roku, so you're plus one pawn. So that would be good. So, but instead, he plays knight to d5 here. We get knight takes knight, bishop takes bishop, king takes bishop, and now we get queen takes queen takes knight on d5. We get rook to d1, queen to e5, rook d4, and now we get c5, trade, pawn takes. Of course, you have to take with the pawn because if you take with the rook after rook d2, you have this backwards pawn is a little bit weak on d6. So he takes. Rooks come off, now black controls the d5. You can maybe line up the classic xqc kebab with rook e2 to impale the meat. We get king c3 being played by Hess. d5, we get rook h2, king c7, we get h5. Now we get b4 here, king to c4 and king to c6. Of course, the classic kebab with rook d2 to impale the meat. So we get uh, h takes g6, h takes g6. Now we get rook to h7 here, rook to d7. C3 is played, and now we get A5. G5 played by Robert. Position is pretty balanced here, by the way. King is maybe good on C4, maybe bad, but you have an active rook on H7, so there, there is definitely play. We get E4 here, and now Robert plays this horrible move, rook to H4, trying to win the pawn on E4. What he could have done is he could have played rook to H8 to go rook to C8, or maybe taking on B4 right away, but instead, Robert Hess, the man whose name you can't spell without chess, plays rook to h4 and now you get rook to d3 and now white's king is simply stuck here on c4 this is what we call a classic mating net we get pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn and now white has no way to stop rook c3 which will be checkmate on the next move you get rook takes e4 again if you play any move like a3 i just go check anyway so he takes and after rook to c3 here the king is stuck you have no squares the black king covers the b5 and d5 squares Pawn on c5 covers d4, rook is guarded by the pawn, and the rook, of course, covers the d3 square as well. As well. So the white king has no squares. And of course, this is checkmate. So in, a, in our daily moment of shame, this is the, the bit of shame is that Robert Hess, who competed in the US Championship, was very close to winning it, by the way, in 2009, the year that I won. He has fallen to the levels where he's now losing to my brother, who is barely a master level chess player. So that is our little bit of our daily shame on Robert Hess for losing to my brother. Uh, but I did want to show you guys this game very quickly. And we will, of course, now get back to uh, chess.